and welcome back everybody hello hi uh we're still at the school festival we talked to everyone we're done there are no mini games i'm sad um but we have this one here that we're gonna talk to now huh professor albert is that you well estelle and joshua this is a pleasant surprise. I trust you're doing well. Were you invited here for the festival? Certainly no. I'm here on the another business. I've come to investigate a new discovery within the Sapphire Tower. I was hoping that the Academy could provide me with some useful materials. Wow, you're really dedicated. Well, I have to be. Research hasn't made me wealthy, so I'm fueled with my pure enthusiasm. On a related note, the Academy's curriculum is divided into f a few courses, isn't it? Will there be any exhibitions? Yes, although of the three courses available to study here, only the Social Studies class will have an exhibition. The students are displaying the results of an independent research project. I see. I recall my own days as a student. So, where is this research pu publication made? Oh, okay. This must be your first time at the Academy, right? Huh, let's see. I'll explain. Indeed, the campus is fairly littered with buildings. If you'd like, we can just take you there. That would be a help. But... I'd hate to spoil your fun here. Oh, it's fine. We're not doing anything major right now. I see. Well, in that case, I would greatly appreciate you showing me to the exhibition hall whenever you have time. I'll be waiting for you right here in the cafeteria. We have time. Do that right now. My, the students here are fortunate. I certainly wish my own meals only cost this much. Take the professor to the social studies room. Yes. Well, well. You've certainly pulled out all the stops, haven't you? So many areas of interest, from history to economics. Thank you so much. This looks like smashing fun. It was my pleasure to help, sir. Social studies is my major, so I hope you enjoy looking around. I've never been any good at this whole academics thing. One of these days, you really, you're really going to have to get over that. Being a bracer requires knowledge in many different areas of study. <laughs> well, I'm itching to start looking around, so if you'll excuse me. Thank you again for showing me the way here. Uh, sorry for the voice crack there, but uh, I'm a little bit. I got a cold, so. Yeah, you're still Might sick. happen. Might happen in between. Miss Chloe! There they are. Oh, you're all here. Hey, kiddos. Glad you could make it. Are you having fun? Yeah, it's awesome! I ate so much candy I puked! I told you not to be such a pig. <laughs> Is Matron Theresa with you? Yep, she's talking to those people over there. Here she is! Good afternoon all. Matron Theresa. Good afternoon, Matron. Thank you very much for inviting us here today. The children and I have enjoyed it greatly. Hey, Miss Chloe! When's your play thingy supposed to start? We've all been looking forward to it. I see. Well, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer. Did you know that both Estelle and Joshua are going to be in the play with me? Really? gonna be so cool 
What what part are you going to be playing, Mr. Joshua? Um well, how to put this? <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Oh, by the way, are you guys still staying in Minoria? Yes. The th yes, through the continued goodwill of the innkeepers. That said, however, Hmm? Hey guys, do you want to see the costumes that'll be used in the play? They're pretty dresses and suits of armor. Pretty dresses? Suits of armor? <laughs> I guess I have your attention. I'll give you an exclusive sneak peek at them before the play even starts. Yay! I wanna go too! I'll be backstage. Come when you're ready. Okay, now follow me. <laughs> Joshua, Joshua is such a thoughtful boy. I didn't want to speak of this in front of the children. You mean... Yes, I've chosen to accept the mayor's offer. We will impose upon the Norians no longer. I will tell the children today, after the festival. I... I see. That's sad, but I suppose you have no choice. <laughs> Please, don't look at me so. Grand Cell is easily reachable by airship. Moreover, I can look for work while I'm there. If I save enough Mira, I'll be able to rebuild the orphanage someday. Matron. <laughs> now then, let us find the children, shall we? I would imagine that they're a bit much for Joshua to handle on his own. I'm pretty sure that's a sailing uniform, the right one. The, the <laughs> suit of armor there, or maybe it just looks pretty similar. <laughs> I wonder if I could wear it. Not with how short you are. I wish I could try on a white dress. Well, well, you look like you're having fun. Huh? Where'd Joshua go? Mr. Joshua? He left after he brought us here. He said wait here until the girls arrive. Mm. Is something wrong? <laughs> I know. Mr. Joshua went looking for the guy with silver hair. Silver hair? Yeah, he helped us get out of the fire before. His hair's all shiny and pretty. What? So, so he's been seen on campus? Uh-huh. Just for a second, though. Mr. Joshua was sure surprised. Polly, you dummy. Why didn't you come here and tell us any of us? Because I was eating the crap. Estelle. No, oh, Polly, so did her so adorable. I just love her. <laughs> I know. I'll be right back, Matron. Yes, that's fine. Chloe, would you please go with her? Don't worry about us, we'll be fine. Are you leave, Matron? Hey, you're going too? Yes, I'm sorry. We'll see you at the play. Yeah, it's gonna knock your socks off. Anyway, let's go find Joshua. I don't know who that guy with the silver hair is, but even without meeting him, he totally creeps me out. Just a moment, please. Zeke! Scree! I need to ask you something. Did you see where Joshua went? Scree! Zeke is like, no, fuck you, I'm leaving. <laughs> 
I don't think I'll ever get tired of that. <coughs> Wait, is he headed... To the old school building down the back road, yes. Shall we? Joshua! Hmm... Wait, Rana, know you're outside. Hey, what's going on? There's the fire. Where's the fire? Don't tell me something's wrong. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> okay. All right then. Just be sure and let me know if anything pops up. Hmm. Well, well, so the play starts this afternoon. I can't imagine it will come anywhere near to the splendor of Grandson's theater. But this is official business after all. I suppose I will go see it if I must. The Genus Royal Academy? It's um, as magnificent as, it, like, as I'd expected. The campus festival is quite the f event, I see. I gotta say, you pretty well fit in with your uh, uniform, Richard. That's true. Ah, hello there. Everything's been quite a big success. I'm looking forward to seeing the play. I expect it will be a big hit for the festival. Professor. Well now, I see that you're studying hard. Ah, okay. The play starts this afternoon. And it's based on the old classic Madrigal of the White Magnolia, huh? Sad to say, I'm not so sure that a bunch of students can pull that one off. Hmm. That is pretty rude. Yeah. Mm, Gilbert, where did you go? I'm gonna give you 10 seconds for me to find you, Gilbert. If I don't, I'm not gonna talk to you. Oh, hey. Hi, Chloe. Have the kids from the orphanage gotten here? Yes, all present, present, present and accounted for. Good. Hopefully they'll be able to forget about all this nastiness, at least for a little while. Indeed. Oh, Chloe and Estelle. So, what's so important that Joshua actually thought it was okay to leave two cute, cute girls on their own? Hmm... He is following a past nemesis. Oh, so we think. He just thinks boys are cuter? Hmm, also a possibility. I can't find Gilbert. Maybe he's nowhere to be found. Very sorry for you, Gilbert. Gilbert just left. Gilbert was left. Ah, yeah. no mini games. I hate it. Boring. Yeah. Well, it's open. Do you... Do, do, do. Oh, oh. Strange. I could have sworn. But it couldn't be. Joshua! Hey, you two. You need to stop making us worry about you. I almost had a heart attack when I heard you went chasing after some guy with silver hair. Um, how did you know? Polly told us. I guess she saw you. Ah, uh, she's a pretty sharp-eyed kid. I did follow a man matching the description out this way. But I guess I'd lost him. Oh my. He must have been pretty talented if he managed to give you the slip. Any idea who he was? I'm afraid not. I don't think it was our arsonist, though. I tailed him as long as I could. I see. By the way, why did you run off by yourself? My thoughts exactly. You could have at least left us a message. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you. Who said I was worried? I was just pointing out the importance of teamwork. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Not five minutes ago, you were in a total panic. I, I, I was not. And hey, you were pretty concerned yourself. I, um... 
<laughs> Thank you, both of you. Your attention, please. All play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Once again, all play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's almost time, isn't it? Yes, we should get into costume. The play will start soon. All right, then. Let's do this. Oh, uh, what about that guy with the silver hair? Hmm. I suppose that all we can do is let Karna know and warn her to keep an eye out. Hmm. The three then spoke to Karna about the silver hat men and left for the auditorium immediately afterward. Thirty minutes later. Wow, look at all the people. Okay, now I'm getting kinda nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even there. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time, anyway. Rude. Just one thing at a time, huh? Well, I guess I'll just focus on the boy in the dress then. That'll be easy. Okay, okay. You two can have your little spat another time. Uh -huh. Ahem. <clears throat> this year's campus festival is already a big success. Though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor, we can't afford to be intimidated. So just remember our number one rule and you'll be fine. If you're gonna puke, do it off stage. We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now, let's close it out with a real bang. Yay! Woo! Without further ado, the Student Council proudly presents Madrigal of the White Magnolia. Enjoy the show. In year eleven, in la 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 la. Wow, good. Leave the stage immediately, Jill. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is already ruined. <sighs> in in year eleven hundred of the Septian calendar, one hundred years ago, Labelle was still a land of nobles and aristocrats, but commoners too had some power, and they were prodigious prodigious traders that grew more influential with each passing year. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed, clashed, clashed often. As time went on, these clashes intensified. The intercession of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. The stage was set for a final conflict. A year had passed since illness stole the king from his people. Our tale begins on an early spring evening in the rooftop garden of Grandsell Castle. The street lights shine on everyone, each bright with their own happiness, and in spite of that, I hear you are, princess. Please, don't you think you should be going to bed soon, your royal highness? Staying up so late can surely do you no good. It's all right. If I should fall ill, if that happened, then perhaps I could avoid becoming the last ember in this dying flame we call a bow. Please do not speak of such things. Your Highness, you are the most exalted individual in the bow. If you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, your highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. One is Sir Julius of the chivalric order of the Imperial Guards and the eldest son of the Duke. And Sir Oscar, common as though he may be, he has been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. 
Oh, oh such, such fine, fine men. men. No one knows better than I the quality of the characters. Oh, Oscar, Julius, how am I to choose between you? Oh my, isn't that Joshua playing the role of the pl of the princess? <laughs> I suppose that Jill has put a great deal of thought into this reverse casting business. Indeed, ma'am. Places roll well, but the two maids leave much to be desired. Do you remember, Oscar? How we spent our boyhood days in this alley, running about and pretending our sticks were swords? I could never forget Julius. In those days, it was all so simple, with you and with, Ce with Cecilia alike. I treasure the time greatly. <laughs> I recall how stunned I was. I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover another had been doing the same. She was as lovely as the sight of the falling petals in spring. Indeed, fair Cecilia was like unto our very own sun. But her light would dim with each day that passed. The nobles and the commoners. The fury of that conflict could never have been avoided. The princess's grief is e easily understandable. Cruel fate mocks us so. For it is our very own existence that has brought her such sorrow. Oh wow, they're so cool. I hate to say it. But the guy kind of looks cuter than the girls. <laughs> Hush now and watch the show. Know this, Julius. The commonest impudence can be tolerated no longer. If they should forget their place and no longer view us as their superiors, Lebold's power structure would surely fall into ruin. If I may, Father, it has been roughly ten years since the Eastern Republic was founded. Perhaps the eventual seizing of power by the common people is inevitable in any state. Speak not of such repulsive events! What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast all tradition aside? Better we should fall to our knees before the Empire's military and concede to their will. Father! <laughs> well, that's a damn fine joke up there. You let the commoners get all high and mighty, and your whole society collapses. Your Grace, perhaps it sh would be best to keep your our voices down. No. Oscar. I am expecting great things from you. If you can get the royal family on our side, we will have a great advantage over the nobles. And that advantage would allow us to seize power. But Chairman, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia for political gain. <laughs> Always putting others before yourself, I see. Even though you know you now have to the chance to become king, albeit only on paper. If you would refuse, it will lead only to a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. The royal family, and surely the nobles as well, would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman! Impressive. They've really done their research. I had severe doubts about this, but since I first heard about the si ever since I first first heard about the reverse role gimmick, <laughs> the students have all put a great deal of work into this. It seems the young braces have had no small hand in this either. I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or not. I cannot simply allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, 
I know not what I should do. Oh, oh gosh, I'm gonna be sick. Are you alright? You must have had quite a bit more than you can handle. It may be spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Oh, thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would have to be quite the young fool not to see what I must do. You got that right. What? <laughs> My arm! <laughs> Just a touch of anesthetic on the blade. Now if you'll be so kind as to sit still... Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just a noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it badly enough to pay me up front and pretty well of that. All I, you need to do is die. Ah, I get it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So up next we should have... Whoops, I almost got so wrapped up that I forgot about my work. Long has it been since you have entered my sight, fair princess. Yes, Julius, it truly has. I cannot help but notice that Oscar is not with you today. Back when my father yet breathed, the both of you were oft, oft spoken of by the maids of the court. As you well know, your highness, the kingdom is in the midst of a crisis most dire. And as such, he and I may never be as close as once we were. I confess, I come to you today to ask a favor. What favor would that be? That you would allow he and I, head of the chivalric order of the Highguard and a young general, to engage in a duel of honor. And that the victor shall be granted the, the great honor of becoming your husband. Quite dramatic indeed. Caught up in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally decided on a duel. The princess now realizes their determination and keeps silent. And on the day of the duel, two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it. Commoner, noble, and all social castes in between. But conspicuously absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, Princess Cecilia herself. My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may be both unburdened. If nothing else, for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands. But at this moment, my words and her smile seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps. But what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? As I see you with the blade drawn, I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before the storm by the name of revolution should claim us both, we shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done. On guard! Impressive, Julius. I should say the same of you. But still, you seem to hesitate. What troubles you, Oscar? Is this the extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. Well done, Julius. Magnificent swords swordsmanship. <laughs> Oscar, 
your arm! I fed Wes, despite a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh, not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most loathed, you Gratman. Was this your intention from the start? <laughs> I'll thank you to cease slandering my good name. Are you implying that I instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you? It's all right, Julius. My own inexperience has brought this about. Besides, I've received far worse on the field of battle. <laughs> I will put everything I have behind my next strike. I intend... I intend to kill you. Oscar. Very well. I will wager it all on my next strike as well. For the fair princess and the future of the very kingdom. He who lives when it's all said and done will inherit the responsibility for all. And he who dies will watch over it all from the realm of the spirits. Such is also the pride of a knight. <laughs> I suppose it is. Yeah? No! Uh, Cecilia? Princess! Cecilia, why? Why were you not in attendance? Oh, Oscar. Julius. I did not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt like I had to find a way to put a stop to this fight. Praise Aedius that I arrived in time. Cecilia... Princess... Hear me, all in attendance. Dismiss me and set aside your differences, please. Are we not all of Labal? And do we not love this land? There isn't so little that separates us from one another. If you would but take your foe's hand, surely we could find a peaceful resolution. Y your Royal Highness, you need say no more. My vision fades. But what of you two? Will you not do as I ask? Your will be done. My princess, at your side. Strange, everything is floating. When I was young, I would sneak out of the castle down to the alley. Oscar, Julius, you both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So please... Don't ever stop. Princess? No, this cannot be. Princess! I'll do anything. Please, no! Cecilia, you... Our poor princess. I just don't understand why'd she do such a thing. Our princess gave her life that we might fight, might stop this unending dispute. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is the pride of a nobleman. Had we not fight, f had we not been fighting, it would never have come to this. Only now, when it is too late, do I see your folly. Is this the fate of all men, with their spirits still shackled to their flesh? Aedius, great goddess of the skies, we now know of your great resentment. There's much that you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted you flesh to be your vessel, 
but your spirits still, still know more freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only within you yourselves. So, so beautiful. A, a more beautiful voice I have never heard. It's amazing. Adius herself has graced us with her presence. The goddess. Incredible. Hear me, young knights. I have observed your contest. You are both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It is as you say. Our own immaturity is what invited this fate upon us. Chairman, has your hate for the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all but men? I, I am ashamed. Duke, you know your sins better than anyone else could. And you, all the rest of you, who have simply watched these events unfold, there is something fundamental within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. <laughs> and it now seems that you have each remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps hope yet remains for the bell. So long, long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Oh. She has vanished. Mm. Oh, where am I? B princess Cecilia? Oh my, Julius? Oscar? Have you both been called up to heaven as well? It's... it's a genuine miracle! Princess! Oh, praise Adius! What? Why are the two of you here? And the Duke, and the Chairman? So then, I am not dead? Oh, mighty Adius! Adius has given a ball back his, its beloved. Praise her for her benevolence. Oscar, Julius, um, what happened? Nothing that you need concern yourself over, Cecilia. The conflict is as an, is at an end. I believe that everything will be all right. You're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius. No. You still intend to fight? On the contrary. This match is concluded. And besides, this fool managed to get hit on a sword arm. But it would not do for a duel such as this to not have a clear, vic clear victor. Thus it stands to reason that the man who fought with a significant handicap, yet emerged undefeated, should be regarded as the victor. Wait, Julius! Don't misunderstand me, Oscar. I have not given up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue, but with blades of wood. Just as when we were boys. I see. <laughs> Very well then. I accept your challenge. I have neither of you any regard for my own wishes. Y you are mistaken. You, my lady, shall judge today's match, and I think it's only fair for the victor to be granted a kiss. Surely everyone waits with bated breath for it. Very well. <gasps> Don't they look marvelous together? Almighty Adius, look well upon this. And may this fine day extend unto eternity. Eternal peace to Labal. Eternal glory to Labal. <laughs> Quite the grand finale. But no matter. Ooh. 
And so, the curtain fell on the magical of the White Magnolia to grant fanfare and acclaim. And also to this episode. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, that was... I, I do appreciate that they actually put, um, like, the real sword fighting in there. Yeah. They did really well. Yeah, it's, it was really nice to see that. Yeah. Well done, yeah. everybody. Clap, clap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you next okay. time, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.